answer is in proper form. So when does your form most easily lead to injuries? While your foot is in the air or when your foot hits the ground? The answer is the way your foot hits the ground. Bad landings can easily lead to sport injuries. So the longer your ground contact time, the more likely to be injured. Let's see what ground contact time is. Look at this runner here. His ground contact time is very long. The longer your ground contact time, the more pressure is on your foot, which means a higher chance of sport injuries on his legs and knees. Another important factor is left-right ground contact balance. For some runners, the ground contact time for each foot is different, which may cause injuries if they run with this imbalanced form for extended period of time. Now we know what ground contact time is, let's look at the correlation between the running form and ground contact time of these two runners. Now we can look at the data of this runner. The data shows an imbalance between his right and left foot. Let's make some adjustments. We just saw the data of this runner. The contact time of his right foot is longer, with 52%, while the time of his left foot is shorter, with 48%. That's because his left foot stayed behind him for too long, which led to a long ground contact time. Let's first look at his original running form. His left foot stays behind after touching down, which makes this foot's ground contact time long. The correct way is to quickly return this foot to this position under the hip. Pull your foot back quickly. Don't leave it behind. This will shorten the ground contact time and let you step off the ground more quickly. In short, we should stay focused while we are in the air. We need to strengthen our focus and our awareness of pulling up our feet. Only by doing this can we shorten our ground contact time and reduce the risk of injuries. Let me ask you this, what's the major difference between running on the spot and running forward? The answer is the angle of falling. Let's have a runner to demonstrate running on the spot with a cadence of 180. Okay, increase cadence to 190. Increase it to 200. Increase it to 220. Do you see this? We increased the cadence, but he did not run forward. So what's the major reason that allows us to be able to run forward? Did you see the moment he moved forward? The key to accelerating forward is to increase your angle of falling. Dr. Nicholas Romanoff, developer of the pose method, came up with a clear conclusion regarding the relationship between running speed and the angle of falling. If you want to run faster, you have to increase your angle of falling. So the cadence is not the main factor for increasing your speed. The angle of falling is. The angle of falling is defined by having your hip position in front of your supporting leg. If you run with a slouching posture with your shoulders hunched forward, your hip will be behind, which creates a small angle. You need to straighten your body to create a greater angle of falling. When he increases his angle of falling to 10 degrees, he can finish the distance in six minutes. When he increases his angle of falling to 15 degrees, he can finish the distance in three minutes. From another point of view, the greater the angle of falling, the quicker the weight leaves your foot, which gives you a shorter ground contact time. We now know sports injuries from running are closely correlated with ground contact time as well as with running speed. Sports Science. See you next time.